Okay, this is the New York State Regents exam, June 2011, page four. Only three questions on this page, so this should be quick. Which statement describes the kinetic energy and the total mechanical energy of a block that's pulled at a constant speed up an incline? So we're going up a hill at a constant velocity. Well, kinetic energy is one half mv squared. So if the velocity isn't changing, neither is the kinetic energy. So let's look for that answer first. Kinetic energy should be the same. Kinetic energy decreases, kinetic energy decreases, kinetic energy remains the same, kinetic energy remains the same. Okay, so we've got choice three and four as possible correct answers here. Well, what happens to the total mechanical energy? Well, if I'm pulling it up a hill, it's actually gaining potential energy. Not kinetic, it's staying the same. But it is going up higher in the air, so it's gaining potential energy. So the total energy of this particular system is increasing. So uh, total mechanical energy of the block uh, increases. The total mechanical energy increases. Now oftentimes uh, you're told that uh, in a physics question, the word total remains the same. The total energy of a system remains the same. But right now we're just talking about the block, the total energy of a block. So uh, it's not really the entire system, it's just this one part of it. And in fact, you lift it in the air, it gains uh, potential energy, which means it's gaining mechanical energy. Question 14. Question 15. Which diagram represents the electric field lines between two small electrically charged spheres? Electric field lines are otherwise invisible lines of detectable force uh, that you can detect with electricity. When you map these field lines by convention, which means everybody got together and agreed, uh, you would put a positive test charge into the field and see which way it goes. So let's see which way a positive field will go. We'll look at choice one, away from positive, yes, but towards positive. There's nothing that is both repelled and attracted to a positive. Uh, so this is uh, an incorrect answer. Away from positive and away from positive. This looks promising. Away from negative and towards positive. Um, this is incorrect. The positive, if the arrows were going in the other direction, this would be uh, also a correct answer. But obviously you can't have two correct answers. So uh, this is a tricky and uh, away from positive and away from negative. And that's uh, the same problem as we had over here. Um, it couldn't be both away from positive and away from negative. That's the correct answer. Question 16, the diagram below represents a view from above of a tank of water in which parallel wave fronts are traveling towards a barrier. Which arrow represents the direction of travel from the wave fronts after being reflected? So in this question, the waves are coming in this way, and uh, they're going to hit a barrier. Which one of these, A, B, C, or D, represents the reflected waves? Well, this is easy. All you have to do for this one is to simply pull out your mirror, place it at the barrier, and then pull out your laser and turn it on. And it comes in, and it reflects off, and it follows C pretty close. So obviously C is the correct answer. Now, if you don't have a uh, laser and a mirror with you, you have to do a little bit of math. So let's look at the ray coming in. This is the ray as it comes in. And at the point of contact, the first step in ray optics is to draw a normal. So the perpendicular at that point, uh, it actually pretty well lines up with B. So this is the normal, and this would re represent the incident ray. So we would measure that angle and that would be the reflected ray. And in fact, uh, C is in fact the reflected ray. D is coming off a uh, perpendicular to A, uh, but um, the geometry is wrong. D isn't the correct answer. I guess it would be the best wrong answer, but uh, C is the correct answer. Well, those were easy.